Erev Shabbat Shalom, Rabotai. We are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Yoma. We are up to Perik Het, Mishnah Het. Today's Mishnah should be Leilu Nishmat, Neria ben Svetlana, Aranbay, Ben Eliyahu ben Burcha Yisraelov, Minuchatam began Eden. Amen. Yom Kippur is primarily a day of repentance and atonement. The following two Mishnayot discuss the role of Yom Kippur in atoning for various sins, as well as other ways of achieving atonement. No process of atonement is effective without repentance. Teshuvah, in order to repent, the sinner must confess his sins before Hashem, regret his action, and accept upon himself never to repeat it, as the Rambam writes in his commentary to the Mishnayot. Now, Rabbeinu Yonah in his Shari Teshuvah notes, that while these are the basic components of Teshuvah repentance, true repentance includes many more steps. And the explanation of these levels and stages of repentance form the basis of his Sefer Share Teshuvah, the gates of repentance. On the other hand, Rabbeinu Yonah writes that any level of repentance at all brings at least some level of forgiveness from Hashem. The Mishnah begins, Hatat v'asham v'day mechaperin, the Hatat offering, and the definite Asham offering atoned for those sins that require these offerings. Now, the standard Hatat offering is brought to atone for the mistaken transgression of certain Torah prohibitions. Generally, one must bring a Hatat for any transgression that if committed intentionally is punishable by Karet. Aside from the standard Hatat, the Mishnah includes another kind of Hatat, namely the variable Hatat offering, Korban Ulevi Yored, which is brought for the four specific types of prohibitions listed in Sevel Vaikra chapter 5, Sukim 1 through 13. The definite Asham atones for three specific sins swearing falsely to keep money or property that belongs to another person, mistakenly making personal use of objects belonging to the Bet Mikdash, and certain cases of relations with a Canaanite maidservant who is the wife of a Jewish servant in Evid Ivri. Now, there is another kind of Asham called Asham Talui, the pending Asham, which one must bring when he is unsure whether he committed one of the transgressions for which he would have to bring a standard Khatat. The Mishnah does not speak about this offering since even when one brings it, it does not achieve complete atonement. It protects a sinner from punishment only as long as he remains in doubt. If after bringing the pending Asham, he finds out that he did indeed commit the transgression, he must bring a standard hatat to gain complete atonement, as the Gemara writes on page 85b in Mesechet Yoma. Upon repenting and bringing the appropriate offering, the sinner's atonement is complete. Now, the Mishnah did not explicitly mention repentance at this point, since it is assumed that one who brings his required offering regrets his sin and repents of it, as the Ram, Rav explains. The Rambam in his commentary notes that, in fact, Confession of the sin, which is one of the basic components of repentance, is required as part of the process of bringing an atonement offering. Now, the requirement to bring an offering in order to achieve atonement applies only in the times of the Bet Mikdash. Nowadays, when there is no Bet Mikdash, repentance alone suffices to atone for these sins, as the Rambam writes in Echot Shuvah chapter 1 and Echot 3. It is recommended, however, that one who violated a sin for which he would be required to bring an offering, study the passage in the Torah about the offering. As Rabbeinu Yonah writes in Sharet Teshuvah, and the Gemara says in Mesechim Menachot, page 110a. The Mishnah now turns to sins for which the Torah does not prescribe an offering. Mita v'yom ha-kippurim mechaprim ima teshuvah. For sins punishable with malkut lashes, the death of the sinner... Or Yom Kippur atones as long as it is with repentance. Meaning if the sinner repents, Yom Kippur completes his atonement. And if he dies before Yom Kippur, his death completes the atonement. Now a special holiness exists on Yom Kippur that causes repentance to be accepted and sins to be forgiven. In order to benefit from the atonement of Yom Kippur, however, one must properly observe its laws. The Mishnah now discusses less severe sins which are not punishable with Malkut lashes. Repentance alone, even without Yom Kippur or death, atones completely for lesser transgressions. Meaning for violating positive commandments and negative commandments for which no penalty is prescribed in the Torah. The vast majority of the positive commandments in the Torah do not have a set penalty for one who neglects to perform them. The violation of many negative commandments is punishable by malkut, lashes. But even in the, their case, the punishment pertains only to one who no, sinned knowingly. 
Furthermore, there are some negative commandments that do not carry the penalty of Malkut at all. This section of the Mishnah speaks of all violations for which no specific punishment is prescribed in the Torah. Therefore, if one mistakenly violated any negative commandment for which he does not need to bring a khatat, or he neglected to perform a positive commandment either mistakenly or knowingly, or he knowingly violated a negative commandment for which there is no malkut, he need only repent to attain complete atonement. Vala hamurot, it is in the case of sev- uh, in the case of severe ones that the transgressions punishable with malkut their repentance is not enough. Hitola, it suspends punishment ad sheava yom kippurim vichaper until yom kippur or death comes and completely atones for them. Now, for purposeful violations of even more severe prohibitions, those for which the Torah prescribes karet or death, repentance and Yom Kippur prevent the full brunt of punishment, but the sin is fully erased only with some measure of suffering. There are, however, certain mitzvot, such as charity, acts of kindness, and Torah study, that have the power to protect the person from even this suffering. There is one form of sin for which even repentance, Yom Kippur, and suffering do not fully atone until the death of the sinner, the sin of Chinul Hashem, desecration, desecrating Hashem's name, God's name. A person desecrates God's name when his actions cause others to sin. As the Rav explains, the Sharet Yeshuvah Rabbein Yuna does right, the acts of sanctifying Hashem's name can serve to counteract this sin and bring atonement. So to summarize, the Art School Lusitata brings us a summary. There are Four different levels of sins and atonements based on the Rav and the Ramam's commentary. Lesser transgressions, kalot, one who mistakenly commits a sin for which there is no prescribed offering or knowingly commits a relatively minor sin, meaning one that is not punishable with malkut, karet, or death, requires only repentance to gain full atonement. However, one who commits a sin for which the Torah prescribes a chatat or a definite asham offering brings the offering with which together with repentance atones for his, for his transgression. Nowadays, when there is no bet mikdash, repentance alone suffices. That is number one. Number two, hamurot, severe transgressions. In the case of one who knowingly commits a transgression that is punishable by malkut, repentance suspends punishment until Yom Kippur or the death of the sinner when his atonement is complete. Number three, transgressions of greater severity. For one who knowingly violates a commandment that is punishable by karet or death, repentance and Yom Kippur lessen the punishment and a measure of suffering completes atonement. And the final category, number four, desecration of God's name, Chidun Hashem. If one desecrates the name of God, repentance, Yom Kippur, and suffering bring some level of atonement, but full atonement is not achieved until death. According to many authorities, these levels of atonement are just general guidelines which teach the severity of different levels of sins. They are not absolute rules. There, are, there may therefore be circumstances in which a complete, wholehearted repentance bring ab- brings about atonement even beyond the levels that are outlined here. And that is the end of Mishnah Chet. We continue now with our final Mishnah in Mesechet Yoma in Perek Chet Mishnah Tet. Having set out in the previous Mishnah the various methods of achieving atonement for sins, this Mishnah lists some limitations on the power of repentance in Yom Kippur to bring atonement. The Mishnah begins, Haomer echeta ve'ashuv echeta ve'ashuv. If one says, I will sin, and then I will repent from that sin. And then after he sins again, he says, I will sin, and then I will repent from that sin. And maspikin bi'adola sot He is not given the opportunity to repent. And the commentaries explain, God in His kindness allows a person to repent and gain atonement for his sins. When a person takes advantage of that kindness and uses it as a reason to sin, it is fitting they not be given any assistance from God to repent. Now in the Mishnah's case, where he sinned in this way two times, not only is he not given assistance from Hashem to repent, but he might not even repent at all. The Gemara on page 87a, Masechet Yomah states that when one knowingly sins two times, the sin becomes for him as a permitted thing, meaning he becomes accustomed to the sin and it is very difficult to repent from it. However, even in this case, if he struggles and with his own effort repents fully, his repentance is surely accepted. A similar case, the Mishnah says, If one says, I will sin, and Yom Kippur will atone for the sin, and Yom Kippur 
Yom Kippur does not atone for the sin, meaning Hashem does not help him to do what is necessary to achieve atonement on Yom Kippur, namely repentance and observing the laws of Yom Kippur. Now an instance in which Yom Kippur alone does not bring atonement, Averot she ben Adam lamakom, for sins between man and God, meaning sins that violate God's will, but are not directed against people, such as eating non-kosher food, Yom Kippur mechaper, Yom Kippur atones, Averot she ben Adam lechavero, but for sins between man and his friend, such as wounding or stealing from or verbally offending another person, and Yom Kippurim mechaper ad shiratzet chavero. Yom Kippur does not atone until he appeases his friend. Whenever a person wrongs his friend, he commits a double crime. Besides sinning against his friend, he also sins against God, who prohibited wronging another person. This Mishnah teaches that one cannot achieve atonement even for his sin against God, unless he first asks the victim to forgive him. Now the Mishnah cites a scriptural source for the rule that Yom Kippur alone does not atone for sins between man and his fellow. Ed Zud Darash Rabbi Elazar Ben Azariah. Rabbi Elazar Ben Azariah. Rabbi Elazar Ben Azariah derived it from the following verse in Sefer Vayikra, chapter sixteen, pasuk thirty, which states regarding the atonement of Yom Kippur: Mikol Hatotechem Lefnei Adonai Titaru. From all your sins before Hashem shall you be cleansed. The words before Hashem can be interpreted as describing the sins mentioned in this verse. And the verse refers to sins between man and God. The plain meaning of the verse is that Yom Kippur, one is cleansed before Hashem from all his sins. But from the wording before Hashem, one can interpret it to refer to sins between man and God. And therefore it implies that only for sins between man and God is Yom Kippur atone. But for sins between man and his friend, Yom Kippur does not atone until he appeases his friend. And like we said, every sin between man and his fellow is also a sin against God. When one appeases the victim, the part of the sin that is against his fellow is corrected. At that point, it is considered a sin only against God, for which Yom Kippur can atone. And the Mesechet concludes with the teaching of Rabbi Akiva, about the special nature of repentance and atonement experienced by the Jewish people. Amar Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva said, Ashrechem Israel, fortunate are you people of Israel. Before whom do you cleanse yourselves from sin? And who cleanses you from sin? Avichem Shebashamayim, your father in heaven. Rabbi Akiva speaks of two kinds of repentance, cleansing oneself, he says, before whom do you cleanse yourselves? And being cleansed by Hashem who cleanses you. Tosfid Yom Tov explains that the first kind of repentance is accomplished by one who realizes that he must repent and takes independent action to do so, therefore he cleanses himself. Rabbi Akiva teaches that after he begins to repent, Hashem helps him to complete the process. The second kind of repentance, who cleanses you, pertains to one who cannot take even the first step towards repentance because he is trapped by temptation. Rabbi Akiva teaches that such people too are helped by their Father in Heaven, who in His great mercy arouses them to repent. And Rabbi Akiva cites two verses that show that Hashem cleanses the Jewish people from sin. Shneimar, it says in Sefer Yechezkel, chapter 36, pasuk 25, I, Hashem, will sprinkle pure water upon you, and you shall be cleansed, now this verse states that it is Hashem Himself who purifies sinners. This verse corresponds to those who are not able to even start the process of repentance. God begins the purification process for them as when a person is sprinkled with purifying waters by another person. The Omer, and it also says in Sefer Yirmiyahu, chapter 14, Pasuk 8, in describing God, Mikve Yisrael, the Mikve, literally hope of Yisrael. The plain meaning of the verse is that Hashem is a source of hope for the Jewish people. The word mikveh can be understood as alluding to an actual mikveh, a ritual bath that purifies a person from tumah contamination, impurity. The verse therefore teaches, Ma mikveh miteret atmeim, just as a mikveh purifies those who are contaminated by tumah impurity, Afa kadosh baruchu miteret Israel. So does the Holy One bless as He purify Israel of its sins. Now this verse corresponds to the first kind of repentance mentioned by Rebbe Akiva, those who take action to repent, and whom Hashem then helps. This is similar to one who takes the action of immersing himself in a mikveh, who is then purified by the mikveh waters. So too these penitents, people that do tshuva, they take action to repent, and are there purified from their sins by the mikveh of Israel, Hashem. And that is an abotai of Mesechet, Mishnayot Mesechet Yomah, Hadranalach, Vadrachalan, Chazak Mazantov, 
We continue now our journey in Mishnah Yomi to Mishnah Masechet Sukkah. Everybody, Shalom, Erev Shabbat Shalom. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.